everyone. In this video, we are going to be asking chat GPT questions about networking, hacking, and cybersecurity. Uh, chat GPT is a new chat bot run by AI. It can answer questions, write exam papers, and do a bunch of tasks. There have been a ton of different Twitter threads about this, but I wanted to give it a try myself and see what kind of answers it gives me to questions that I ask. So let's just dive right into it. All right. Here we go. So let's start with a very obvious question. How can I make a viral hacking YouTube? Viral, oh my gosh. Hacking YouTube video. Let's see what kind of answer it gives me. Um, and Okay, uh, so it basically says, it's not a good idea to try and make a viral hacking video. Hacking is illegal and can cause serious harm to individuals and organizations. Instead of trying to make a viral hacking video, consider making or creating educational content about computer science and technology that is both informative and entertaining for your audience. This will not only be more ethical, but it will also likely be more successful in the long run. So this was kind of awkward. <laughs> Um, obviously, uh, this actually is a very common, I guess, uh, train of thought, uh, that people have about hacking because they don't really consider pen testers or ethical hackers, bug bounty hunters, things like that. And unfortunately, if we don't make any content or educational information for people who are wanting to learn to get into those career fields. They don't have a positive place to go and learn these things that uh, from someone who is ethical and can kind of show you the ropes and also teach you to be ethical because then you're just kind of only making the only resource for these videos on unethical forums. So that's, I'm going to have to disagree with chat GPT, but Maybe uh, we'll see. We'll see if it can redeem itself. Um, how can I become a pen tester? Let's see what it says about pen testers specifically. I'm very interested. I wonder if we can get it to kind of like contradict its original you know, statement about hacking. Uh, so it says here, a pen tester, also known as a penetration tester or ethical hacker, is someone who is hired by an by organizations to test the security of their computer systems and networks. To become a pen tester, you will need to have a strong understanding of computer systems and networks, as well as good knowledge of different hacking techniques. You may also need to have a relevant certification, such as the Certified Ethical Hacker Certification, which is offered by the International Council of E-Commerce Consultants, the EC or yeah, EC Council. Interesting that uh, EC Council and the Certified Ethical Hacker Certification got a shout out. Uh, let's just ask it like, what is the best cybersecurity certification? If it has an opinion on this or not, that'll be interesting. I also want to ask it about some protocols. I want to see if it can give us information related to hacking, uh, more specifics. Okay. There are many different cybersecurity certifications available and the best one for you will depend on your specific goals and interests. Some popular uh, cybersecurity certifications include the CEH, the CISSP, and the CompTIA Security Plus certification. If you are just starting out in the field, the CompTIA Security Plus certification is good, a good place to begin, and it covers the basics of cybersecurity and is widely recognized by employers. As you gain more experience and knowledge, you can then consider more advanced certifications like the CEH or CISSP. It's important to research the different certifications available and choose the one that aligns with your career goals and interests. I think that's a pretty decent answer. I mean, I know people have opinions about 
the certified ethical hacker certification i personally have not taken any of these certifications aside from the security plus and i honestly thought it was a good place to start uh if you are just getting into cybersecurity and technology in general i think it covers like a wide variety of topics uh this video is not sponsored by them i'm just giving my opinion to someone who has taken the certification all right let's ask it some uh questions related more to hacking so let's ask it like why is the border gateway protocol insecure so we're specifically asking about uh, BGP, which I had made a previous TikTok video on about BGP hijacking, and there are some security flaws with BGP. So let's see if it can give us a good answer. The Border Gateway Protocol, BGP, is a routing protocol that is used to exchange routing information between networks on the internet. BGP is an important part of the internet infrastructure as it helps to determine the most efficient routes for data to travel between networks. However, BGP is not inherently insecure and like any other protocol, it can't inherently, okay. Uh, <laughs> and like any other protocol, it can be exploited by attackers if it's not properly configured and maintained. Some com common vulnerabilities in BGP include the lack of authentication and encryption, which can allow attackers to intercept and manipulate routing information to migrate these risks, migrate, mitigate these risks, uh, organizations should implement security measures such as encrypting BGP traffic and using routing authentication to verify the legitimacy of BGP messages. Okay. Interesting. I like this. Um, they specifically are talking about, um, Attackers can intercept and manipulate routing information, which is good. Um, and yeah, some basic things about, you know, routing authentication and things like that. Let's find out what are the most insecure network protocols. Let's see what it is. It's taking a while. Some of these take longer than others. I'm very curious, like, what it's doing or considering, like, why some things take longer than others. If it, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how this works. <laughs> All right, so here we go. There are many different protocols, and some are inherently more secure than others. Some of the most insecure protocols include Telnet, okay, FTP, and it's giving us a little definition http okay valid valid uh smtp the protocol that is used for sending and receiving mail it's insecure because it does not encrypt email by default rdp let's see it's insecure because it does not encrypt data by default making it easy for attackers to intercept and read sensitive information in general network protocols that transmit data in plain text do not and do not use authentication are the most insecure as they can be easily intercepted and exploited by attackers okay good these are pretty solid answers let's see um let's see how can active, let's do active, how can active directory be hacked? I need to think more. I'm thinking of these questions on the fly. I probably should have written some down before. Uh, it's giving us a general description uh, about Active Directory, and it says, uh, while generally secure, it can be hacked if not properly configured and maintained. Some common vulnerabilities in Active Directory include pa weak passwords, unpatched software, and misconfigured security settings, which can be exploited by attackers to gain access to the networks. Additionally, attackers can use tools such as Mimikatz to extract sensitive information from Active Directory database, such as user passwords and other credentials. Okay, it's not giving, I mean, here it listed like Mimi cats. Um, what are popular active directory exploits? 
it's not giving us like a lot it gives us a good broad overview but i want to see like how in depth it can go um let's see okay password cracking okay <laughs> yeah uh pass the hash attacks attackers can use tools such as mimi cats again to extract password hashes and active from the active directory database curb roasting okay cool golden ticket attackers can use tools such as mimi cats again um silver ticket again more mimi cats um okay all right so it did list a couple different attack methods that you can use let's see here um how let's see let's think how can let's just see like how can hackers or actually let's see how do hackers find new exploits let's see if it gives me anything here i'm waiting in suspense uh, okay, so some common methods include reverse engineering, scanning, hackers use tools, vulnerability scanners, research. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Uh, sharing. Hackers can share and exchange information about new exploits with other members in the hacking community. Buying. Hackers can also buy and sell exploits on the black market. Okay, where can new hacking exploits be purchased I'm curious let's see and this is fun um the only thing that I had to do was sign up with an account um and submit my unfortunately submit my phone number which I'm not a huge fan of but it is okay let's see if if we can get it to give us request timed out okay i have not seen that before all right who okay how about this who is the most famous hacker too many requests please slow down oh no okay let's see did i run out okay let's try a new thread who is the most famous hacker let's see what it says oh we could ask it about uh content creators okay uh some refer to hackers uh as computer criminals who gain unauthorized access to networks while using the term to refer to individuals uh many hackers are actually security experts who use skills uh to help organize okay so it didn't give us who are notable hackers let's see if we ask it in like a different way if it'll list any names oh no i'm worried this one's gonna time out too okay Whew. all right some notable hackers include kevin mitnick who was once the most wanted computer criminal in the united states adrian lamo who gained notoriety for hacking computer networks of several high profile companies other well-known hackers include Jonathan James, who was the first juvenile to be sentenced to prison for a cybercrime. Gary McKinnon, who was accused of hacking into computer systems for the U.S. military. All right. So it gave us a couple names there. That's interesting. Uh, let's see. Who are... Who are popular hackers on YouTube? Okay. Let's see. Sorry, I'm not able to browse the internet and therefore cannot provide a list of popular hackers on YouTube. As a large 
language model trained by OpenAI, my abilities are limited to providing general information based on my training data, which includes a wide range of text from books, articles, websites. Okay, cool. So it actually doesn't have the ability to look at the internet in real time, and it's only working off of the information that had been provided to it to train. Um, let's see. What else can we ask? Let's see, how can hackers exploit TCP? Okay, TCP or transmission control protocol, just giving us an explanation. Let's see, okay, TCP spoofing. This is a type of attack in which a hacker sends fake TCP packets to a target system using forged IP address. The goal of this attack is to either disrupt communication between the target and another system or to gain unauthorized access to a target system. We have TCP sequence prediction, TCP session hijacking, and TCP resource exhaustion. Okay. Well, let's give it one more question. How can DNS be exploited? DNS or domain name system is a system used to convert human readable domains. Um, okay, so we know that. Let's see what they have. DNS spoofing is a type of attack which an a, a hacker sends fake DNS responses to a target system using a forged IP address. Okay, DNS cache poisoning, this type of attack in which a hacker injects false DNS records into a DNS server's cache with the goal of redirecting 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 users <laughs> uh, to malicious websites, DNS amplification, DNS tunneling. Dang, they're listening a lot. Okay. Well, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, you can definitely try this out and ask it some of your favorite hacking or cybersecurity questions. I think all the information that I have gotten in here so far has been pretty good. Although some of it is vague and probably would require more research. Um, I think this is like a cool place to start. Like you can even ask it how to become a network engineer, how to be a pen tester, or you can, you know, ask it more questions about, do you think, Ooh, maybe we should do that one more. Okay. Do you think network engineers will be, <laughs> I don't want to say jobless, <laughs> jobless will be needed in the future. Let's see. All right, this is the last question, I swear, this time is actually the last. And then you can go and try this yourself and maybe see if it gives you some interesting responses. I'm curious to know. Let's see if network engineers will be needed in the future. It's kind of like a little crystal ball. It is difficult to predict the future, but based on current trends, it is likely that network engineers will continue to be in high demand in the future and more and more devices as more and more devices become connected to the internet and rely on networks to communicate, the need for skilled professionals to design, implement, and maintain these networks will only increase. Network engineering is a complex and rapidly evolving field. It is likely that the new technologies and challenges will arise in coming years, further increasing the need for qualified network engineers. I would also like to agree with that uh, statement as well. But thank you for joining us and testing out this new chat GPT that everybody is talking about. Hopefully uh, you get to try it out yourself too and let me know what you think. Thanks for joining and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye everyone, see ya.